In this video, you're going to learn how to find the special products of binomials. And we're going to do two different kinds of uh, problems. We're going to do the problems where you're squaring a binomial, and we're also going to do the problems where you have a sum and difference pattern. These are the formulas that we're going to be working with, but I'm going to show you why they work and how to work with them effectively. So let's dive into the first group of problems. When you're squaring a binomial, remember binomial means two terms separated by plus or minus, and when you take that quantity to the second power, what it really means is that you're multiplying that binomial times itself. It's like you have two of that quantity multiplied together. Now, you know that you can do this distributive property twice. So I'm going to do A times A, A times B, then I'm going to take B times A, and then B times B, and we're going to combine like terms together. So let's do that. We've got A times A, which is equal to A squared. Remember, when you multiply, you add the exponents. A times B just gives us AB. Now I'm going to take the B times A, which is BA, or you could say AB. Multiplication is commutative. And then B times B gives us B squared. Again, when you multiply, you add the exponents. These are understood to be 1, so 1 plus 1 is 2. Now notice we have AB plus AB. That means we have 1AB plus 1AB, which is 2AB. So that's where this pattern is coming from. You've got a squared plus 2AB plus B squared. And it's the same thing if you have a, a minus B, you're going to get A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. And the reason that you're getting a 2 here is because you have two of that same middle term. So I'll show you how to work with these problems and maybe you can pause the video and do some on your own to practice. Let's look at number 2 now. We've got this binomial squared, 2x minus 3, the quantity squared. So the way that I like to think about it is, I take this first term and I square it. So that's what I think of as a squared. 2x times 2x is equal to 4x squared. Okay. Now I'm going to take the last term squared. That's this b value squared, the second term squared. So I have negative 3 times negative 3. When you square something, you multiply it by itself. That's always going to come out to a positive number. That's positive 9. Now the middle term, the way I like to think of this is I take a times b times 2. See, I'm taking a times b times 2, a times b times 2. So 2x times negative 3 is negative 6x, then times 2 is negative 12x. Now, a little pointer here, and that's that these formulas are pretty much the same because you can see it's the first term squared, it's the last term squared, then when you multiply these together, if it's negative, you're going to have a times negative b is negative ab doubled which gives you negative 2ab, or here you get a times b is ab doubled as positive 2ab. So you can kind of think of those formulas together uh, very similar. Now for number 3, try this one. We've got 5y plus 2, the quantity squared. So again, the way that I like to think about it is I take the first term times itself, so 5y times 5y is 25y squared. I take the last term squared, 2 times 2, which is positive 4. And then I take a times b times 2. So 5y times 2 is 10y. Then I double it, which is 20y. And again, remember, if these are both positive, all these terms are going to be plus or positive. If this is a negative in between, the middle, term, middle term will be negative, but the first and last will always be positive. Because when you square something, you're always going to get a positive number. Okay, a negative times a negative is a positive, a positive times a positive is a positive. So see if you can do number four now. We've got the quantity 3c minus 4d, the quantity squared. Well, again, 3c times 3c is 9c squared. Negative 4d times negative 4d is positive 16d squared. Then I multiply a times b times 2. So 3c times negative 4d is negative 12cd, doubled is negative 24cd. Okay, let's look at number 5 now. So 7x plus 3y, the quantity squared. 7x times 7x, 49x squared. Now, the mistake that students sometimes make is they say, well, 7x squared, oh, I'm just going to put 7x to the second power. Or they might square this and say 49x. Or they might say, you know, but you want to think of it as that same number quantity times itself. Okay, then if we jump to the last term, 3y times 3y, that's positive 9y squared. Then we do a times b times 2. 
So 7x times 3y is 21xy, doubled is 42xy. Now you might be saying, Mario, why don't I just take this and write it twice? 7x plus 3y and 7x plus 3y, and then do the distributive property twice. Or if you learn the FOIL acronym, first, outer, inner, last, or if you did the box method, you can do all those different techniques and they'll work. This is just designed to be like a shortcut. The nice thing about learning this technique though is that what we're gonna be doing here eventually is we're gonna be given this and we're gonna be factoring it, which is like doing the process in reverse. So if you recognize this pattern, you'll be saving yourself some you know, uh, heartache later, okay? So let's see if we can do these last five. So see if you can pause the video, try and do these five right here, and we'll go through them together. Number six, we've got a binomial, two terms, squared. So I'm gonna use this special pattern. We're gonna do 8x times 8x, which is 64x squared. Negative one times negative one is positive one. To find that middle term, I do a times b, doubled or times two. So that gives us negative 8x doubled is negative 16x and you got it. And again, if they were to give us this, I could factor it back to this if I recognize it's a perfect square trinomial, that's how it's referred, but we factor it as a binomial squared. I'll show you that in some of my other videos. Now for number seven, we've got one plus four y, the quantity squared. So how do we do that? First term squared, one, Last term squared, 4y times 4y, that's 16y squared. 1 times 4y is 4y, doubled, 8y. Again, y doubled, see how we're getting the same term twice. Again, you might want to, when you're first learning this, go ahead and write it twice and do the FOIL method, distributive property twice, box method, whichever method you like. But after a while, you'll, it'll start to get very tiring and you'll say, hmm, why do I keep doing this? I have to do all this writing and all I really have to do is get right to this final result. But it sometimes helps in, with your understanding to understand where this is coming from by doing that the long way. But using the shortcut, three squared is nine, negative two x times itself is four x squared, a times b times two. So three times negative two x is negative six x doubled, negative 12x. See how quick that is? Number nine, first term squared, that's 25y squared. Last term squared, that's positive four. Again, the mistakes that students make and I don't want you to make is they might say, oh, um, negative two squared. Oh, I did that on my calculator. And what they do on their calculators, they do something like this and the calculator is going to do the exponent, then multiply by negative one, then they're going to write negative four. But you if you use a calculator, make sure you put it in parentheses, it's the quantity squared. Okay, so a negative two times a negative two. But these are small numbers, they're pretty easy to work with. So this gives us negative 10y doubled negative 20y. And then the last one here of this pattern, then we're gonna do the uh, sum and difference pattern. First term squared, 2c times 2c, that's 4c squared. Last term squared, 9d times 9d, that's 81d squared. Middle term, a times b, times two, or I like to say doubled, that's 18 CD doubled, 36 CD, and that's your final result. So let me erase the whiteboard and then we'll talk about the next type of pattern. If you like the way that I explain things and you wanna go deeper with me learning more about Algebra One or Algebra Two slash College Algebra, check out my video courses for sale. I go through 85 lessons in one of the courses and 87 in the other course, taking you step by step learning the concepts, typical problems that you will encounter and how to work with those. And I give you some problems to practice on your own as well that we go over. So check out my courses. Also now on my YouTube channel, you can join as a member. And if you join at the additional videos level, you get access to over 125 videos now that are on there, uh, like my midterm and final exam reviews, my entire geometry courses on there, ACT and SAT, videos as well as additional videos and I'll be uploading more as time goes on as well. So join as a member at that additional videos level and I'll see you over there in that membership area. Now switching gears to multiplying binomials where there's a sum and difference pattern. So sum and difference just means that these are the same two terms a and b, a and b, but this uh, sign in between the two terms, one's positive, one's negative. Now it doesn't matter, this one could be negative and this one positive, but the key is that you know, one's positive, one's negative. Now look at what happens. Let's do it the long way. The long way is we take a times a, 
which is a squared. Remember, when you multiply, you add the exponents. Then a times negative b, that's negative ab. Now I'm going to take the b and distribute. b times a is ba, or you could say positive ab. And multiplication is commutative. b times negative b is negative b squared. But notice negative ab, positive ab, those are opposite signs. Those terms are going to cancel, leaving us with just a squared minus b squared. So the way I like to think about it is, when I see a sum and difference pattern, I just multiply the first terms together and the last terms together. I don't have to worry about the inside and outside. So some students learn the FOIL method, first, outer, inner, last. You don't need to worry about the O and the I because you can see they're canceling. So I just think about multiplying the first term in this group times the first term in this group, last term in this group times last term in that group. Okay, so let's go through some examples. So again, you can see 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3. These are the same two terms. They're just separated by plus. This one's separated by minus. So first times first, 2x times 2x, that's 4x squared. Last times last, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. This is what's referred to as a difference of two perfect squares. What we're going to be learning eventually here is they're going to give us this, and we're going to break it down or factor it into these two binomials. So this is a good pattern to be comfortable with. Let's look at number two. So same idea. Notice 5x and 1, 5x and 1, 1's minus, 1's plus. So I take the first terms together. 5x times 5x, that's 25x squared. I take the last terms, negative 1 times positive 1, that's negative 1. And you got it. See how quick it is? Let's do another one, number three. 7x and 2, 7x and 2, 1 you're adding, 1 you're subtracting. First times first gives us 49x squared. Last times last, positive 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, and you got it. So one of the things that makes math you know, enjoyable and fun is when you can do some of the techniques very easily and simply without having to really think about it and you know, do it the long way and having to slog through it, you know, it's like it becomes you know, like once you learn how to drive a car, it's like you just can cruise on down the road. You know, you don't have to get bogged down by some of those finer details. And some of those uh, things that make it easier as well are things like know, knowing your multiplication tables, being comfortable with fractions, you know. So if those are things that you have difficulty with, go back and see if you can, you know, get better at them. And it's going to make it a lot easier. But again, working with these multiplying binomials, sum and difference pattern, first times first, 100x squared. Negative 3 times positive 3, negative 9. Okay, so are you starting to get the hang of it? It's kind of fun, actually. The key, though, is to be uh, good at recognizing when you have a sum and difference pattern. It starts to jump out at you. You say, okay, I can see these are exactly the same. That's interesting. One's positive, one's negative. There's a plus sign in between, a minus sign in between. So all I have to do is first times first, that's 36x squared. Last times last, negative 16. Okay, now... Pause the video, try these last five problems, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We'll go through them together, see if you got them right, okay? Uh, so let's do number six now. So if I was going to do this, I'd recognize sum and difference pattern, 8x and 5, 8x and 5, plus here, minus here, special product pattern, sum and difference, first times first, 64x squared, last times last, negative 25. Got it. Okay, how about number seven? Now, here's a mistake that students sometimes make. They say, well, Mario, can I just, I don't like the fact that this variable is here and this number is here. Can I switch these? Can I make this 2x minus 1? Well, I wouldn't do that. And the reason I wouldn't do that is because if you make it 2x minus 1, this is actually a negative 2x. That negative is attached to that 2x. That, that goes together as a group. So I wouldn't change the order. Okay, just recognize, oh, 1 and 2x, 1 and 2x. Now, with addition, addition is commutative. If you wanted to, you could switch those around. But let's just look at what we got here. We're first times first, that's 1. Last times last, that's negative 4x squared. Positive times a negative gives us a negative, right? Okay, number 8, sum and difference pattern, right? Same two terms, 1's plus, 1's minus. 5a times 5a, 25a squared. 2b times negative 2b, negative 4b squared. Okay, now this one here, 3c times 3c. 9c squared. Now, some students, they might try applying this all the time. They say, well, I've got a binomial times a binomial. Mario said, just multiply the first together and the last together. But what happens if it's this a plus b and a plus b? It's not a sum and difference pattern. You have to 
recognize that, oh, I have a middle term here, 2AB. Or maybe the terms are completely different. Then you can use your FOIL or distributive property twice or box method. Okay, and then last times last, that gives us negative four. And then the last problem, see if you got this one, m times m, m squared, negative 11 times positive 11 is negative 121. So great job if you're able to follow this video. The next step that I'd like for you to take is to learn how to factor, and that's how to reverse this process. I'm gonna put my best factoring video right there for you. Follow me to that video. I'll teach you how to factor. Let's make math a little bit easier. I'll see you over there.